Yo, what is up guys, and welcome back to my gun range here. So today, we are going to be talking about, uh, we're going to be talking about the biggest regret of my life. Uh, something that still haunts me to this very day. I mean, something that I have a lot of regret about. Uh, something that, <clears throat> you know, it still, it still bothers me to this very day, and I just, I'm having a very hard time letting it go. And uh, maybe I could teach y'all to, <clears throat> you know, not ever do this. Um, but I do have some good news. Uh, that camera is sitting on top of 50 rounds of 10mm, uh, by the way. So, <laughs> hey, during these times, hey, that's something. So I'm going to enjoy those here in just a little bit. But anyway, so yeah, um, this is something that still bothers me mentally. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm still very frustrated that I did it. And like I said... I'm, Man, it's just, it, it, it definitely is the biggest regret of my life. So, Wolf, what is the biggest regret of your life? What is it? What is it? Well, anyway, this is, uh, this is it right here. I don't know if the camera can see just how thick that is. Now, I'm not going to pull all this out because I got my information on it, but that's, that's like a book. And that's not all of it. Wolf, what is it? What is it? <laughs> that is all the guns that I've had that I I traded sold and I really I, I really miss them with all my heart and soul I, I really really miss them I mean there were some that were, were justified in selling but guys I had so many guns I had so many guns I mean I could have had a, a gun shop I mean if I had all these guns right now there's no way the, the safe would even be able to close <laughs> that is that's how many guns I had. I mean, like, you know, but I, I really, I miss them. I miss them, you know. Um, but anyway, yeah, so what I'm going to talk about today, uh, and so bear with me. So there's going to be a lot of talking, a lot of storytelling and everything. Um, you know, I had the latest and greatest guns out there, you know. I mean, like, you know, Chris Vector, uh, the SIG MCX, and, you know, one thing I'd want to say is if you're ever going to buy a gun in your life, you know, make sure it's a gun that you know that's going to have purpose in your life. You know, I don't really care about so much how flashy it is. I mean, you know, I'm not going to lie, and sometimes it gets to me too, you know, but make sure it's a gun that's going to actually have purpose. Like, look at this right here, guys. Okay, so this is an Iver Johnson Colt 1911. This is my Buried Resolution 1295 Misty. Here's my Xbox Gamer Tag Max Rank on Call of Duty Black Ops 2 Zombies. You know, I grew up with Black Ops 2 Zombies, me and my brother, and this is definitely a gun that's always going to save me. Look, this is $500. I can shoot lights out with this thing. I've also done a little bit of hunting with it. Um, 500 bucks, man. I carry it around. It's a good farm gun, and it serves its purpose. And even for a target gun, it's great. I carry it out in public also here and there. Uh, I was carrying it actually out in public today. You know, look at this right here, guys. Okay, I got this for $200 right here. This is just a Ruger American. When I was with animal control, I mean, I could... It's not tactical. It's no, There's nothing tactical about this. This is a standard gun, but I can shoot daylight out with this thing if I really wanted to and it's got a huge body count I mean a huge body count on it but anyway we are going to talk about some of the guns that I had that I lost and uh, just like I said it that is the biggest regret I have in my entire life and this right here I probably threw away I probably threw away about twenty thousand dollars about twenty thousand dollars or more I, I just took it and I threw it in the trash um, because it was the latest and greatest gun. I was like, oh yeah, I could really use it for this, or man, I could really use it for home defense, or man, if, if a freaking war broke out in America, I could use this gun for that, or whatever. But anyway, yeah, so I got I got some notes, and with these notes right here, this is not even all of them. That, that's not even all of them. I mean, some of the paperwork is not even in here. It's still in my safe. So think about how thick how much more thick this would be this is like a book how many guns i've had so um but anyway yeah me uh well not me um my brother and my family family members none of them even remember that i used to own a uh an 1895 45 70 lever action oh man i never even shot the gun never even shot the gun i bought it never shot it and sold it 
you know, I was like a 4570, oh man, that thing's got, you know, tons of power and, you know, I don't know what I could face during the fallout times or whatever, but man, it's a lever action, it's got a lot of power, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, spend the money on it, I never even shoot it and I sell it. It, just, it sat in my bedroom forever, sold it. One gun that um, I definitely have a lot of regret about selling, and it, it really bothers me a lot. I mean, it, it really hurts my heart. And it was so stupid of me, it really was. I had an SGL 104 from Arsenal, and it was a 545 by 39. And I got those, I got that when it was just coming in the country, brand new, from Russia. And, um, I mean, that thing was amazing. Amazing! And I sold it over the most stupidest thing, like, there was a certain ammunition that I, that I only wanted to run through it. And there was a period in time where I couldn't find the ammo no more. So I was like, well, if I can't find the ammo, then I don't want the gun no more. You know, and my brother Mitchell, he was shooting his M4. I'm like, man, but 2, 2, 3, 5, 5, 6, that's always going to be around and everything. I think I'm going to sell this SGL. Yeah, well, right now during the coronavirus, you know, around I can find like that. It's 5, 4, 5 by 3, 9. I go to my caddy right now. They have tons of it on the shelf. Nobody's buying it because nobody shoots 5, 4, 5 by 3, 9 over here. And I don't have the rifle no more. It's gone. You know, it was brand new. The thing was a tank. And I sold it for a SIG MCX patrol rifle. And you know what else? I was shooting the MCX patrol rifle. It was great. It was innovative. It was different. Oh, it wasn't like an M4. It's different. It's innovative. Okay. Well, some of those innovative brand new guns, guess what? When their parts start breaking down, then it's harder to get parts. So... You know, and then I saw Nuttin Fancy's uh, video on the MCX patrol rifle where he's shooting it in the desert and the spring is completely combust on the inside, right? So now I'm like, oh man, you know, I got this MCX rifle. I mean, yeah, it's really cool. It's great and everything, but oh man, you know, well, if there's a war in America and everything, and I, I got to grab my MCX rifle and I pull a trigger and boom, it just breaks on me. You know, oh man, I don't know. Maybe I should, maybe I should just go with an AR-15 and... Then I went ahead and I sold that just for a standard uh, Colt, but actually that Colt ended up being an M4A1, but it doesn't go all the way to full auto, so I actually am thankful to own it because it actually is stamped from the factory, M4A1. Had no idea, so I was extremely excited about that. Um, but I also bought another M4 that uh, <laughs> I, I sold that um before moving to the country i i traded that in for a uh a 12 gauge shotgun but i still have the first m4 that i ever got then i had of course my bushmaster ba 50 bmg oh man i feel like a fool man you know i mean i love I, I waited my whole life to get a 50 bmg i get one and i go oh well you know I'm just not getting many trigger pulls out of it because the ammunition is so expensive. Yeah, it's really powerful and everything, and but I'm not getting many trigger pulls out of it, so I'm just going to go ahead and sell it. So I sell it. Um, also, the very first gun I ever had that was actually like a big caliber other than 22, I had a Mosin the Gaunt. I got Mosin the Gaunt for $99 at Cabela's. And it was hard to talk my mom into it, but I got it. And I mean, I loved even the Mosin, man. I loved it, you know, I had, I was making history with it, and it would, I was making good times with it, and I s sell that too, you know, I, uh, anyway, Canix, okay, the Canic pistol, Canic pistols for me, I had multiple Canic pistols in my life, I mean multiple, Canic pistols, like, you know how people, they use watches, like, barter items, I had Canic pistols, like, okay, okay, Kevin, you owe $300 left on this, uh, 44, ma let's say 44 Magnum, I owe three hundred dollars more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a Canic. Okay, here's your forty-four Magnum. Okay. I have so many Canic pistols. So many. I still have one of the very first holsters that ever shipped out with a Canic. Glocks. Okay, Glocks. <laughs> oh, Glocks. <laughs> I have so many Glock 21s, people. I have so many Glock 21s, and I sold them all. I customized them, and I sold them all. Well, except well, except one. One was a threaded barrel out of the factory with uh, high-rise sights. 
and I sold every Glock 21 I ever owned. I sold the only two Glocks I ever held on to was a Glock 26 and of course the 10 millimeter. Now this one, yeah, I outfitted this with Alpha Wolf gear, everything. You know, that's my thinking, you know, like realistically, okay, Wolf, if you want power in a Glock, just get a freaking 10 millimeter and be done with it. Okay, you want a 45, get it in a Colt, be done with it. Okay, you got a great trigger. These are target guns, self-defense guns, just get a freaking Colt and be done with it. You know, but, yeah, I sold so many Glock 21s, man. Um, okay, I had an over and under 12 gauge. A lot of people already forgot that I had one of those. I really did. I had an over and under 12 gauge. That was a really nice gun. I had a 22 597 and a single shot 223. I, I, told, I told my dad, do not buy me a single shot 223. I said, look, if you're going to buy me my first rifle, just buy me an AR-15. Buy me something that I know I'm going to love, I'm going to enjoy, take to the range, make memories with <gasps> no, we can't have nothing like that. Okay, so he buys me a single shot 223. I shoot it barely in my life and it's gone. It, it just collected dust and it's gone. I, I was being honest, I said, look, if you're gonna buy me something, buy me something I'm gonna love and enjoy. Buy me an AR-15. But regardless, whatever, that went away. Scorpion. Okay, I had a scorpion, yeah. Uh when Call of Duty Black Ops 2 came out, I got a scorpion during those times. I happened to get one. <clears throat> when the when the scorpion showed up in the Black Ops 2 era, and that gun was hipping and hopping, man. Let me tell you, I got it with the short bill, everything, man. And of course, I sold it over most ridiculous reasons. Ridiculous reasons. Okay, a gun that I spent about two, almost two thousand dollars on. I had a 45 Chris Vector. Okay. I outfitted that gun with accessories, I, the S, SBA3 stock when it was brand new to the market, when that was a brand new stock, well, brace, to the market, I got that when it was first brand new, and it was expensive, uh, I got that, I outfitted my Chris Vector, I had the so hard to find Chris Factory magazines, um, and I happened to get three, I happened to get three. The gun, the stock, brace, the magazines, everything was about $1,700. I took it to the range probably about, oh, maybe three or four times, and then I sell it. Okay, Wolf, why'd you sell it? Because the Chris Vector submachine gun, 45 ACP, you know, well, not really, it wasn't a machine gun, but, you know, shooting it fast. Well, that 45 ACP, there's your, there's your dollar signs going on. I'm like, man, it's 45 ACP, man, this, this money is really racking up. I don't know. You know, it's kind of expensive. Well, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and sell it. So I sell that $1,700 Chris Vector for a CZ Scorpion carbine with a 16-inch barrel. Now, I threw money away. Yes, it's true. But my my Scorpion with a 16-inch barrel has probably a, maybe almost 20,000 rounds through it. So... I had more range time with the Scorpion, so, I mean, I threw money away, but I have a huge round count on my Scorpion, and I had a lot of fun times with it, a lot of range time with it, and I still shoot it sometimes to this very day, so I don't know how I feel about that. Okay, uh, oh man, uh, 44 Magnums, okay, yeah, <laughs> I had the Fallout 4, when Fallout 4 first came out, I got the Model 29 Smith & Wesson with the little like 2 inch barrel. I shot that gun a lot. It was a great 44 Magnum man. It was from Fallout 4. Sell it. I had a 629 Classic 44 Magnum Smith & Wesson. Beautiful gun. Stupid of me. Sold it. I had multiple Raging Bulls. Yeah. I called it my Call of Duty Ghost Guns because it actually isn't Call of Duty Ghost. Sold them. Sold them. I had it. Well, I still got my Smith & Wesson 586 over there, but the guns broke. I misused it. It has about 8,000 rounds or so or more of 357 Magnum through it, and it, it basically blew up on itself because I was running too much pure lead through it, and I, I, didn't, I didn't clean it properly. So I lost my Smith & Wesson 586, which is sitting over there underneath the tree. It's going to be a, a, a wall hanger out here. Um, I love that gun. Black powder. Oh, black powder. 
I had multiple black powder guns. I've had multiple uh, 1858s. I had uh, a Whitneyville, all the Whitneyville. Man, a Whitneyville, that was a really sluggish gun. It, I mean, only, only six shots, but man, when that gun went off, I mean, everybody, <laughs> they had as much black powder as a rifle. It was, it was, it was beautiful, and I, I lost all of them. They're all gone, too. I had multiple judges. Judges 410, 45 Colt. I had multiple judges. I, I, I had so many judges. And uh, they uh, they either blew up on me because I was just brand new into reloading with the 45 Colt. That was my fault, my mistake. It blew up on me. And so I sold. I still have the Raging Judge Magnum. Now that I will never get rid of. That's a really nice judge. Everybody forgot that I used to have an FNX. 45 with a 15 round magazine of 45 ACP. Almost everybody forgot that I had one of those. And uh, man, that was, a, that was a nice gun. I sold that gun for my brother though, because I, I sold it and I bought him a Glock 22. And he actually passed the C CHL courses with it. He loves the Glock 22. But once again, it's just another gun I had. But I sold it, but I sold it to help him out. I had a Russian Vepper 7.62 by 54R. I probably spent, oh, $2,000 or more customizing that gun. I mean, that was a freaking sweet DMR, man. Had the 10-round magazines running and gunning with that Vepper big muzzle brake. I mean, everybody knew what I was shooting out there. I mean, that thing was loud. That thing was aggressive. And I, I sell it. I, 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 I just, I sell it. Many people forgot that I used to own a SIG 716. That was a really nice rifle. I had an Armalite 308. Um, <laughs> it had a it had a sweet I had a sweet 300 blackout. I actually had uh, my dual wield um, Colt 1911s. Uh, they were the Kimber Custom Twos, and I sold them and I and I bought them back. Not the same pair, but a. Uh, brand new from the factory another i had to buy me another pair i sold my my dual wheel 1911s for a stupid reason and i had to i had to buy them back because i got some cash back from a dealership <clears throat> one check was like 1300 another check was like 12 and i told my mom i said mom i'm gonna go buy my dual wheel colt 1911s back again i said I, I really miss them so i got them back in my life and i got them all engraved customized I'm never getting rid of them ever again in my life. I will never do that. <clears throat> um, and I also had a Taurus 1911. Uh, when there was an active shooter at the Rowan Oaks Mall in San Antonio, Texas, um, I went after the active shooter with, with my Taurus 1911. I was the only guard. I, I wasn't supposed to do it, but I did it because I love the good and I love the innocent. And I, I am a protector and defender. I had Taurus 1911, and I went into that mall with it, and uh, I also assisted the police <clears throat> in tracking down the uh, active shooter. Um, but I, I don't want, you know what? I don't want to talk too much more about it. Um, but I had Taurus 1911 during all that. But anyway, that is all I got on my list right here. And guys, that's that is not. That's not even everything. That's not. That's there's. Look at this stack. Look at this. Look at this. And there's more in the safe, guys. I'm gonna tell y'all right now. You, there could be the latest and greatest firearm out there. Let, okay. Let, okay. Let's for an example. Let's talk about the Alien. The Alien Largo nine millimeter pistol. Seven thousand dollars. Guys, that gun looks great. It's innovative. It's different. But let me tell you something about that gun. I think it's got, what was it, a 5-inch barrel or whatever. Okay, let's take a Taurus Beretta 9mm. Stack that $7,000 gun up next to that $300 gun and both pull the trigger at the same time. And the ballistic gel, you're going to get the exact same ballistics. Either way, you want to go about slicing this cake. It's a 9mm out of the exact same barrel length. You're going to get the same damage. Oh, but one hovers there more. Okay, great. But if you train, train, train on this gun or this gun, doesn't matter, $300 to $7,000. You know what? At the end of the day, you can still kill evil. You can still protect the innocent and the good. And guess what? You can still go target shooting and you can make memories. 
you can have fun, you can have a good time. So, I'm just saying guys, don't ever do anything that I ever did. Make sure you buy guns that you know, like you need it in your life. And that's all I got for today guys. Thank you so much for the video. Thank you for your time. Y'all have a good one. Be safe out there. This is the Wolf signing out.